Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is our week's hot monster. Yeah. So Started here in just a moment, but I just encourage you to go ahead and get your Bibles together. And we're going to be in the book of Isaiah, we're going to have a little singing tonight as well. So uh, just go ahead and gather around and get ready. And we're going to get started here in just a few minutes. All right, thank you for being a part tonight. She thinks she fit. Um, you can email us at office at centerbaptist.com 
and let us know uh, which service you might be attending. That will be a huge blessing in uh, letting us know. We're going to open up in a word of prayer, and then Ms. House is going to come and lead us in some singing, and then uh, we'll get ready uh, for our Bible study tonight. So go with me in a word of prayer wherever you are tonight, and let's pray together. Father God, I am so incredibly grateful and thankful for the absolute privilege to be able to come into this building tonight, to be able to prepare our hearts as well as preparing the building for the soon arrival coming Sunday of being able to come back into this building. Again, we recognize that, Lord, it's, it's uh, the building itself is not what houses, Lord, your power and your glory, but it is still very special to all of us. It is still, God, very special to uh, those that call this place home. And we are so grateful to be able to come back and to gather together as a body of believers. Tonight, as we kind of begin to prepare ourselves for this coming Sunday and preparing ourselves as well for uh, just our hearts and minds, we look forward to what you have in store for us. Bless as we sing and we worship tonight. Bless our hearts as we open up your word and we give you praise and we give you glory. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, I'm going to turn over to this house. Our first uh, song tonight will be To God Be the Glory. I'd just like to say that even though these past few months have been difficult, I know we all can find some reasons to give God the glory, either through our lives or someone else. So let's praise Him tonight. <laughs>
be seated tonight. Wow, I hadn't said that in about three months. That's a good thing, right? So thank you for being here tonight. Whether you're online or you are here with us as deacons and staff, I concur with uh, Miss Allison. It's good to see people for several uh, Wednesday nights. It's just been me and the Lord. And, uh, but I wanted to come back to the sanctuary to do our Bible study on Wednesday night. It meant that much to me to be in this building. And coming Sunday, <clears throat> we will be back in this building. And I am grateful and I am humbled. I am thankful for you, church, as well as the many of you have, have joined along the journey through Facebook and YouTube and other online ways. Um, so many of you. And so I want to say to you, if you're in our general area, uh, I know we have people that have logged on all over different states and areas, but if you're in our general area, we would love to have you uh, join with us this coming Sunday. And you say, well, Pastor, how could I let the church know that I'm coming? You too can just simply go to office at uh, centerbaptist.com or even go to our website and fill out the connection card and let us know you're coming. Or just come on. And we'll, we're going to trust the Lord for that. And uh, I encourage our church family to uh, let Miss Jean know. But more than anything, just come on. Come to the, to the 9 o'clock service and drive in. If, if you're not comfortable yet coming into the building, as I've talked to several folks, that is the service for you. And I want to encourage you. But if you're ready and, and, hey, let's come on, you come on to the 1030 service, it will be a little different. You will see, if, you can, if you're watching online, you see some dots up here. Those are not bullseyes. Um, though, uh, bullseyes, is that even a word? Bull, anyway, they are places so we can make sure we're social distancing. You'll come in, you'll see there's every other pew will be uh, partitioned off. As you come in from your car, there'll be folks who will kind of guide you there to the porch where you will wait for one of our ushers and, and probably going to be our deacons here in the sanctuary. We'll seat you according to the social distancing. And uh, the hymns and songs will be on the screen or the wall you'll be able to see. There'll be hand sanitizer. So there'll be some things that are a little different. But I want to tell you, none of that stops or restricts the Lord Jesus Christ. None of that stops or restricts uh, the Holy Spirit. None of that restricts our worship. Isn't that right tonight? And I say, oh, I, get, I get some live amens. I like that. Not just the hand claps uh, from the, the viewers. But um, amen. It doesn't restrict the Holy Spirit. And so I'm excited. So I look forward uh, to Sunday morning. Uh, we're going to go to the Lord's Word of Prayer. I want you to pray. Um, one of our deacons, I found out about, um, he has not been able to be with us in quite some time because of health issues. But Brother Herb Vander is going to be having some wrist surgery tomorrow. So I told Miss Carol we'll be praying for him. He uh, is going to have to, he broke his wrist the other day, so he's going to have to have that uh, operated on tomorrow. So I told him we'll be praying. Keep praying for Malcolm Anderson Church. Um, he is uh, doing better, and uh, the Lord has greatly touched him, and we're grateful, so just keep praying for him. And uh, we want to continue to pray for this nation, to pray for the church. Um, if there's ever a time for the church, the body of Christ, to rise up just now, and to be the Lord Jesus Christ, the skin on, and to be his hands and feet, it is now. And so I believe this is our, our greatest opportunity uh, to show and share the love of Christ. Well, I'm just excited tonight to be here. Uh, also be praying for our youth. Um, over this time of the um, COVID-19, they have been meeting by Zoom around 2 or 2.30 in the afternoon. Most of them in school, but they would be finished with their schoolwork in time to do that. Uh, but they have now moved that meeting to 6.30. So Michael is actually in my office right now having the Zoom meeting. And uh, they've been averaging anywhere from 10 to 12 kids still uh, regularly. And uh, so excited about that. So we pray for them as well. 
And again, we're just grateful to be here in God's house. We're going to go to the Lord in a word of prayer and uh, join me as we pray tonight. And those who are here, just make right there where you are at altar. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, tonight we're just grateful for the privilege to gather in this place and to gather with your people. I am humbled and grateful that there are people that are here tonight as we prepare to get ready for Sunday. And they have been working and preparing the sanctuary are here tonight to help us just to kind of walk through the kinks and get everything ready. And Lord, as we're trying to make the sanctuary ready and prepare everything in those respects, I'm grateful. But Father, above all, we ask that you prepare our hearts, that you prepare us to gather in this building. And Lord, I pray that you would keep everybody safe and well. We pray that you would put a hedge of protection about everyone that would come. We pray, Father, for your divine anointing in the worship and the music and well as the preaching. We pray that you would draw people out. Lord, even those that have joined us by Facebook over these months, Father, we would invite them and hopefully love to see many of them come and be a part of Center Baptist Church. Our own church family, God, to see them come and to join with us again in the building or on the property. We pray, God, for your divine hand. Lord, as we think about those that are on our heart tonight, we lift up Malcolm Anderson to you. We lift up Brother Herb Vandiver to you, Father. We pray for others upon our prayer list. There's so many. And we ask for your divine touch upon them. And Father, we ask also, Lord, tonight for our nation, Lord, for our country, our community. But Lord, as you've been teaching me through the book of Jonah, Revival comes to a city, but it's not necessarily a location. It is the people of the city. It is the people in a church. It is the people in a nation. And Father, we are the ones that are in desperate need of revival and renewal. Tonight, as we open up your word here in the book of Isaiah, oh, Father, as we have enjoyed over these weeks and weeks tonight, walking through the, the account of Hezekiah, as he faced the nation of Assyria coming against the nation of Judah, how you divinely intervened. We're asking, Father, tonight to divinely intervene. As we look at the promises of the remnant, may we be in that group. May we be of those that would remain faithful, that would remain steadfast, unmovable. God, doing the work of the war as the New Testament calls us to Oh, God, speak to our hearts tonight. For those that are gathered here and those that are gathered online, we pray for your anointing to speak to us all. Bless our youth as they're meeting right now by Zoom. Encourage them. And God, we thank you. Lord, help us now as we open your word. Speak to us. God, forgive me of anything that would hinder the working movement of the Holy Spirit of God. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, if you've got a copy of God's Word, I'd invite you to turn to Hez uh, Hezekiah. Turn to Isaiah. Isaiah, not Hezekiah. Isaiah 37, as we look at King Hezekiah. If you've been following along with us on Wednesday nights, we've been here in Isaiah. The King Hezekiah was the king of Judah. Hezekiah was um, a king that was a godly king. He loved the Lord. Judah was the only one that had those godly kings. Israel, the northern kingdom, did not. But Hezekiah was faced with a tremendous enemy in the enemy of Assyria. The king of Assyria was coming against the nation of Judah. They were a larger nation. They were a more powerful nation. And as a result, the tactic that was greatly used against the nation of Israel and the nation of Judah is the same tactic that's being used against us as Christians and as the body of Christ and is the tactic of fear. It is the weapon of fear. I have never in all my days seen fear grip a nation, grip a church, grip leaders of God like this pandemic has caused. It's amazing to see. I know in my own life there were moments I found myself gripped by fear, making decisions based on fear and not trusting in the Lord. I'm not minimizing fear because fear is a real emotion. All I'll say to you is I've learned through this 
this study on Hezekiah, we do not have to live in fear. We do not have to operate in fear. Here's what Hezekiah did. Is they came and they began to really propaganda. Much of what we see around us today. And here they were saying to them, we're a larger nation. Your God's not going to take care of you. The king of Assyria wrote a letter and said, look what we've done to all the other gods. And there's no way that your God can take care of you. We've destroyed all the other gods. But I love what Hezekiah did. He took that letter and he laid it before the Lord. And last week, even by myself in this room, God so ministered to my soul when the, when the prophet said to Hezekiah, because you prayed. Because you prayed, God has heard your prayer and is moving in your midst. I want you to know something. Your prayers are not minimal. Your prayers are not just tiny. They are mighty in the hands of God. When you're praying, but you know what? You've got to believe God for it. We can't just do mammy pamphy prayers and Lord bless me, thank God for you. No, I'm talking about getting honest with God. I'm talking about wrestling with God and believing God that He's able to do what He said He would do. As a guy who believed God, he, 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 it was, listen, I'm, I'm firmly convinced of this. More than ever, God will box us in and will put things in front of us that the only way out is Him. He was taught to Hezekiah said, we got no other choice but to come to you. And by the way, that's the best choice. And Isaiah the prophet comes and he says in verse 21 of chapter 37, because you prayed to me about Sinajab, king of Assyria, this is the word of the Lord spoken against him. And he begins to lay out exactly the plan of God of how God will come against the king of Assyria. And he laid out all these things, but then he stops and he comes to verse 30 and he gives a promise. Then in this prayer, he said, all these things he had spoken up at this point was for the king of Assyria. I'm not going to go through it, but this simply say, he was simply saying, Isaiah the prophet to King Hezekiah saying this, God's got this. He's going to take care of the king of Assyria. But then he comes in verse 30 and he's speaking to Hezekiah now and he says, this will be a sign for you. This year you will eat what grows on its own. And in the second year what grows from that. But in the third year, sow and reap, plant vineyards and eat their fruit. The surviving remnant. That's a good Bible word. See, I didn't know that. I'm glad you're here online and you're in the building because we're going to talk about it. The surviving remnant of the house of Judah will again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For a remnant will go out from Jerusalem and survivors from the Mount Zion. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Isaiah said, Hezekiah, you've been ravaged by the threat of war. You have faced fear. In the outer limits of Jerusalem, the crops have been destroyed. The farms have been ravished. But I want you to know, God's not done. There is a remnant that God is going to use to come up out of the ashes of this, this, this pandemic of fear. And out of that is going to use a remnant that's going to go down into the earth and come up and bring forth fruit. And that remnant is going to be the, the, the people that I will use to bring about a renewal in the land of Judah. When you hear that word remnant, what does it mean? It literally comes from the root word remain. In other words, in the midst of all of that, there was a group of people that says, we're going to trust God. Did that mean they didn't have fears? Did that mean they didn't struggle? And don't get your mind to be the Christian God wants you to be. It's not my struggles. Look to the word. Of God. What I love about the word of God is real. Elijah called fire down from heaven. But in the few pages over, he got scared because a woman said he's going to kill him. And he started running. If Elijah was really wanting to die, he just should have stopped just about taking care of that. He didn't really want to die. He just discouraged. Noah had struggles. David had struggles. Being the person of God doesn't mean we don't have struggles, we don't have fears. It means we take those struggles to the Lord. It means we take those fears to the Lord. And that's exactly 
exactly what Hezekiah did. And he said to them, there's a remnant coming. There's a group of people that's remained, a group of people that have trusted the Lord, a group of people that have done exactly what God has asked them to do. As I begin to think about that remnant through Scripture, it talks about God having a group of people that will stay by the stones. So many people think it takes a crowd to have revival. No, nope. it takes a remnant. It takes a group of people who's willing to say, I'll be counted. I've been talking to pastor after pastor. Y'all forgive me, my... My head's grown evidently since I used this thing. And it's, it's a big head. It's a big head. This is, it. So this, is what I don't, this is what I don't get on each night. This is what I don't get. And so I'm glad to have it back. I'm glad to have it back. And plus, it's louder so that the, the microphone on the phone can hear it. So those of you that are here, if you're hearing it louder, that's fine. So I'm trying not to yell so I don't bust your eardrums. But I talk to a lot of pastors. And here's what... There's, there's one in particular that we talk almost every day. He's dear to my heart. He's not from around here, but he's just dear to my heart. And I said to him again yesterday, I said, best I can tell all we can do is just be faithful. And I want to say that's not just for pastors. That's for a mom and a daddy, a husband and a wife, for a Christian. God's not asked us to be successful. He's just asked us to be faithful. That's right. The remnant are the people that said, I know this is bad. I know this has been tough. But I'm going to stay by the stuff. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep serving. I'm going to keep ministering. I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. I'm going to keep my fire for the Lord. I done told my family. I said, I don't care. I don't, nobody knows what they're going to look like. I mean, even a pastor that I know that pastors a church that averages 6,000 people on Sunday made a statement the other day. Hey, any of us know how much we're running right now. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that first week, I said, man, this is great. We're averaging 300 people watching my sermon. And you know how much a view costs? If you watch me for five seconds, that's the view. Yeah. <laughs> now, some churches went, woo, we doubled our size. No, you didn't. Somebody looked at you and said, no, I don't think so. If you do all that, that's yeah. okay. I just burst somebody's world right there. So we don't know. But I can I can determine my faithfulness upon who shows up. I can determine my faithfulness based on what other people do. Are y'all hearing me? That's right. That's true of a pastor, that's true of a Christian. I gotta say, I'm gonna stay by the stuff no matter what, because that's what I'm called to do. The same pastor said last week when he I was watching his sermon on Wednesday night. Friday when my family was shopping, I was watching his sermon, and he quoted me. Not he didn't get my name, Brother Mark, but he quoted me. So I texted him and I said, "If you're going to keep quoting me, then I won't credit y'all." All right, yeah. that's right. But stay faithful. Stay before the Lord. How do we do that, preacher? Here, here's the promise he gave, and I, I'm going to give it to you. And I'm done. He said. Here's what I want you to do. Eat what grows on its own this first year. Now, stay with me for a minute. That meant you had to have, had to have faith. Yeah. See, the, it was already past time to plant crops. So Isaiah said to him, you tell everybody that stayed with you, that haven't left, have faith this year to eat whatever comes up. That took faith, didn't it? That's right. But he said that second and third year, you work and you plant and you, you you do what you're supposed to do. And then that third year, sow a reap, plant your eat their fruit. In other words, have faith. But then that second year, get to work. You can sit there and you say, well, I have faith. Well, that's great that first year because you have time to plant. But the second year, if you don't have a crop, that's on you. Get out there and work. Do what's necessary. But then even in that work, trust God for the harvest. He said, you plant, you water, and let me bring the harvest. And that third year, and he said, and when you do, you will go down into the earth. Boy, we went down. All of us had at some point, haven't we? Yeah. He said, but hang on. You're going to come back up. Oh. And when you do, you're going to sprout like a new vine. You're going to go down and be happy. But hear me. I'm weary of people telling me how it is. You don't have to tell me how it is. I see it. That's right. 
around. But the men of God and the people of God, let us be people that says, let me tell you how it can be when you trust God. Let me tell you how it can be when God intervenes and God brings the harvest. He said, listen to me, the surviving remnant will go downward, but will come up again and bear fruit. They will not go out from Jerusalem. They will come as survivors. Who's going to do it? The zeal, the passion of the Lord of hosts. Who is the Lord of hosts? It is the name for God that speaks of the God of armies. It speaks of his power, of his infinite wisdom. It is one of the strongest names for God. In other words, you trust God to do the supernatural. And he will do it. In my studies, there's a, there's a song that I love. And, and, and some of the commentators believe that this psalm, Psalm 126, is linked with this very passage right here. Psalm 126 speaks of the restoration of Zion. I want you to listen closely, and then I'm going to close with this. Here's what it says. When the Lord restored the fortune of Zion, we were like those who dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter. Then our tongues were shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for you. This psalm was written by the remnant who said, we were weeping, we were sorrowful, we were down, but now God has given us singing again. God has given us joy again. God has given us laughter again. And the people around will say, the Lord has done great things. But here's where it gets even good. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like water courses in the Negev. He said, you, you, you've restored, you brought like water in the desert. Those who sow in tears will reap with shouts of joy. The one goes along weeping, carrying the bag of seed. He will surely come back with shouts of joy and carry his sheep with him. Won't you stay with me? If this psalm is linked to that passage of the first year, eat what grows up. Eat whatever comes up. Eat that by faith. And the second and third year work, and then that third year will come the harvest. Think with me for a moment. There's that dad. He's got a wife and three kids. There was a little grain that came up that first year. It took every bit to bake the bread they needed to make it every day. But somewhere before the bread, the, the bread was baked, that dad had to take some of those seeds to the side and go, but i got to work that second and third year. So I've got to take some seeds that can be used to feed my family now to trust God for the seeds that are coming. So when it says weeping, Brother Mark, when it says weeping, Brother Mark, here's what I believe. I believe it's that dad out there in that field. He's weeping going, God, I just took these seeds from my family. Yeah. This was bread for our table. And you promised if I, if I sow this second and third year, you were, Lord, we're trusting you by faith that the bread was on our table today was from you. But I don't know if I'm going to have bread next year. So I had to take some of that seed, that precious seed that meant something to my family. And I'm planting out here, Lord, by faith, working and believing that you're going to bring the harvest. That dad was weeping of the precious seed he was having to sow because it meant so much to his family. But he believed God. And when the time came, because he sowed in tears, God reaped a reward. I sent that pastor a note and I said, listen to me, dear brother. You're weeping right now because it's hard. You're weeping right now because it's precious seed. But you just keep sowing that precious seed with tears. And just keep being that weeping father that loves your flock like a father. And if you just keep planting seeds, we just got to keep planting seeds and watering it and trust God for the increase. Amen. It may be weeping for a night. But joy will come in the morning. Why? Because he that sows in tears will reap with shouts of joy. Though one goes weeping, carrying precious seed, he will surely come back with shouts of joy. How is it? Well, it's pretty rough. It's hard to laugh out there right now. Seed is not maybe what we thought it would be. Let's just keep planting in our church. Let's keep planting our families. Let's keep planting our communities.
right now we're weeping because we're weeping for our nation, weeping for the condition of the church. But we're trusting Almighty God who's given the promise. They said, if you'll trust me and you'll water and you'll plant, the harvest is coming. It ain't just about how it is. It's how it can be. And this is a promise. I want to say this to those here and to you online. Two months ago, God gave me that promise. Before I ever started preaching it, there was a week there. I had to come to a decision point. Y'all y'all been there? Fear was gripping me at times, and I was worried about church, worried about church at large. Get up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, then the next night, couldn't go to bed. 1 o'clock, Courtney came in, I was in my office. She said, what are you doing? And I showed her, I said, God just gave me a promise. God just told me I don't have to be afraid. God just told me if I lay this before him, he'll, he'll bring the victory. God just told me that we're going we're gonna to eat what we've got, but there's going to come a time that we've gone down, but we're coming up again. Right. I said, it's a promise from God. So in other words, I'm not just preaching something I got out of some commentary book and something out of somebody else's outline. This come out of the depths of my heart when God Almighty showed up one morning yeah. early. I believe in God for it. And there have been moments I've got absolutely will there be moments before? Yes, sir, there will. But by God's grace, I'm going to trust his promises that he said, we have gone down, but we're coming up again. Right. And you wait and see what God's going to do. Amen. Our best days are ahead of us. Amen. Yeah. To God be the glory. I pray with all my heart. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of Almighty God. That's right. It's not my word. It's not something I came up with. It wasn't something downloaded. It wasn't something sloganish, bought off somebody else. In a moment of deep, Searching and begging, you spoke this word deep into my heart. I know the primary application, of course, is for the nation of Judah, but God, it is still your word to your people. And in my heart, God, you have made a promise that we've gone down, but we're going to come back up. And I believe that with all of my heart. But I don't just pray that for the church, I pray that for every family, every individual. I pray that every person that finds themselves weeping as they're sowing the precious seed, God, would you remind them if they'll just be faithful, that faithful remnant, you will bring harvest. And the joy is coming with shouts of joy when you bring rivers in the desert. And I'm believing that tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you tonight for being here. We, we're going to sing another one house. Was that it? Oh, that's Was that it? Okay. <laughs> say, we're just practicing tonight. We're going to be ready for Sunday. I'm telling you, I, I want to say again to everybody on this journey that's been a part of helping with the online services and behind the scenes, um, this staff and deacons have reached out to people and ministered. I had a, had a call today. I was checking on somebody and they said, hey, would you let uh, one of the deacons know how much their phone calls have meant to me. So I'm telling you, we're blessed. And I'm just grateful. And I'm looking forward to this coming Sunday. So again, 9 o'clock drive-in, 10.30 in the building. And we'll seat as many as we can in here. Then we've got the overflow and the fellowship hall prepared as well. And if you know what service you're coming to, you can let Miss Jean White know at office at centerbaptist.com or you can go to our website and just do a contact page and let us know. Uh, but just come on. Let's gather either on the property, at the church in the drive-in, or in the church at the 1030 service. I look forward to it. Hey, God bless you tonight. And thank you for all of you being here and looking forward to your arrival coming Sunday morning. Now, my camera lady's not here tonight, so I'm going to be walking back. So you just go ahead and log off so you don't see me walking off. All right, you can do this. All right? God bless you tonight. Thank you.